Hi, my name is Ken, and this is Let's Code a Mud in C++11 part 13. Um, so in the last part, we made a tokenizer class that helped deal with uh, text and try to turn it into words. Uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity uh, to take a little detour and talk about things that have to do with text and talk about um, the Telnet protocol, uh, ANSI characters, and uh, Unicode. Uh, and talk a little bit about the kind of control sequences that, that get inserted into text that you might see alongside text uh, from time to time. And we're going to have to understand in order to properly implement this, uh, this interface. Uh, so uh, I want to talk briefly about Unicode first. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail because there's a lot of resources online to help you understand it. Uh, and we're going to kind of try to avoid it. Um, I know you might say, what the heck, Ken? This is 2018. Uh, languages other than English exist. Character sets other than the basic 7-bit uh, ASCII Latin characters. Uh, other characters than that exist. Uh, why, why would you not, um, you know, support that? Uh, to which I would say, first of all, um, kind of um, the the most likely to spawn a debate is that I, I don't want to really have to worry about thinking through all the griefing consequences of characters that look like other characters uh, and bi-directional text and whether that wrecks our rendering or anything. Uh, and if it were just that, I, I might be tempted to, you know, say, all right, let's 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 do it and we'll deal with problems if, if and when they come up. Um, but the more practical reason is that Telnet is inherently a 7-bit protocol. And um, uh, unless... Um, uh, that the, the Telnet protocol negotiates uh, to binary mode, to 8-bit characters. Uh, so a properly behaving Telnet client, uh, like the one on my system, uh, will screen out 8-bit characters, um, and, and you won't actually end up with the Unicode support that you think you have. Now, I can't speak for how well MUD clients interpret or adhere to the Telnet protocol, uh, maybe I could get away with a, a cheap, uh, non-conforming version of, of UTF-8. Um, but, but for now, we're going to stick with what we've got, which is we're going to screen out everything above the ASCII Dell character uh, as unprintable, as, as a word break. Um, and, and we can deal with that as a future enhancement. Okay, uh, that's all I wanted to say about Unicode. Um, let's talk about the Telnet protocol. Uh, we said that you could negotiate to a binary mode. Well, Telnet isn't just slang for let's exchange some plain text with each other, uh, perhaps in a line-oriented mode. Uh, it means that, but it also has um, some, some control uh, sequences. It has uh, flow control, uh, which may be useful if, if one side is getting overrun and can't handle all the text, or if it wants to, to synchronize text, or, or, um, or most importantly for us, uh, echo on and echo off. Negotiate which side will do the echoing, so we can say the server will do the echoing and then not actually echo, and then that will mean that you can enter a password without it being displayed on your screen. That's going to be the part of the Telnet protocol that's the most relevant to us. Uh, but other than that, we're going to want to screen out um, Telnet sequences so they don't accidentally end up on the screen or becoming word breaks. Uh, so let's do that here in our tokenizer class. Um, the, the basic, the entry point of Telnet here is the IAC character, or interpret as command. That's OXFF, byte 255. This means that what's about to follow is a Telnet uh, command. Um, and Telnet sequences uh, with the uh, IAC character uh, tend to be either 2 bytes or 3 bytes. Um, and if they're more than that, then it's usually something that's negotiated in advance. They're saying, I want to send you... I, I want to talk about uh, line mode, let's say. And the other side will say, okay, let's talk about line mode. And then it can send a longer sequence. Um, but without negotiation, two byte and three byte sequences are all we have to worry about. Um, so screening out Telnet is just a matter of saying, um, if I see the uh, IAC character, uh, let's ignore it. Let's, let's skip it and let's skip the next uh, one or two characters. Um, how do I know if it's one or two characters? Uh, well, that's that's why we're going to have this little utility function, uh, ignore telnet command. Um, and then also we need that here. So else if, I'm say if mpos is telnet IAC, ignore telnet command. Okay, so what does ignore telnet command look like? Uh, 
Uh, well, we're we're gonna advance past the I, the IAC character. We already read it. We don't need it anymore. Um, and then we need to find out if this is a two byte or three byte sequence. So three byte sequences all are of the nature um, IAC and then a will, won't, do, or don't character. So what this means, uh, these bytes basically mean uh, one side is trying to go to negotiate a mode. It's trying to say, I want to enter a certain mode. I, I will behave a certain way. And then the other side can say, okay, do behave that way or don't behave that way. I don't support that. Um, uh, contrary, uh, vice versa, uh, one side can say, I want you to behave a certain way. I want you to do or don't do something. Uh, and then the other side can respond, okay, I will or I won't do that thing. I'll, I'll agree with you or I'll disagree with you. Uh, and those occupy these bytes um, from FB to FE. Uh, so a three byte telnet sequence basically uh, looks like IAC, interpret as command, uh, will, and then X, whatever the, the command type is. Uh, so for example, echo off uh, is going to be IAC, will, and then the byte uh, OX01, uh, the, the, the byte value of one. Uh, that means the server will echo, so the client should not echo. Um, and then if the server doesn't echo, you, you have echo off. And then echo on, uh, vice versa, is IAC won't echo. So the client should resume echoing because the server won't. Uh, so that's, that's uh, a basic three byte uh, telnet sequence. And in fact, uh, popular uh, MUD clients, uh, they, they might not speak much Telnet, but the little bit of Telnet they frequently speak is the Telnet echo on, echo off, uh, specifically for the purpose of passwords. And you can actually see this in the Wikipedia uh, comparison of MUD clients. They'll have a, uh, a column for uh, supporting Telnet echo on and echo off. So let's, uh, let's screen this. Let's say if mpos is uh, greater than or equal to Telnet will, and it's less than or equal to telnet don't, then this is a three byte sequence and we have to skip another character. Okay, so that's sufficient to screen out all the telnet that the client sends us. Uh, so we're not really gonna properly speak telnet, we're gonna ignore everything the client says and we're just gonna send back the echo on and echo off sequence. We're gonna keep it really simple. Um, so let's create something for the, uh, we need a header file so that the, um, the interface has access to this. Um, I'm going to create a text.hpp in the server. Um, let's see, we're in namespace mud, namespace server. And let's create some constants. Uh, so, uh, like we said, uh, echo on, or echo off rather is um, OXFF, uh, interpret as command, uh, will echo. So that's what echo off looks like. And then echo on is the reverse. It's won't echo. Uh, and then we need one more. We need our new line uh, because as part of the Telnet protocol, we, we said before in a previous part that line endings have to end carriage return new line. So let's do that uh, properly to speak proper proper telnet. Um, and let's comment, you know, these are uh, telnet sequences. Okay, and then we can go to our interface. We can include text.hpp. And I'm just going to change all of our um, carriage return new lines uh, to this new line constant. And we'll get good proper line endings every time. Okay. Um, so that that covers the Telnet protocol and what we're going to do with the Telnet protocol, um, which is not much. Uh, there's one more thing I want to implement, and that's um, ANSI control sequences. Uh, so what are ANSI sequences? Well, ANSI uh, sequences come from the days of um, uh, terminals, uh, where terminals weren't just a program, but were, were a box, were a, a piece of hardware that you would attach to a computer, and that would be your screen and your keyboard, your interface to that computer. Um, 
And then the, the computer could send uh, different control characters to control that terminal to do things like uh, make uh, the text more intense on a monochromatic display, so the, the, the uh, bolding that text. Uh, or it could, on a color display, could change the color of the text. Or it could do things like move the cursor and things we're not going to worry about. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to do this for bold and for color. Um, so I just want to put a couple examples in here. Um, so uh, ANSI sequences tend to be of the uh, variety of, let's let's start with bold text, right? Um, so they're going to be of the variety of 1B, which is the beginning of an ANSI escape sequence. And it also needs, I think it's the open bracket, uh, oh, the open bracket, right? Um, so this, this combination, uh, I think this is control open bracket even, uh, followed by open bracket. This means an ANSI sequence is coming. And then after this, you just have to consult a, a, a reference uh, to, to know what they are. Uh, and Wikipedia has a, a good reference page. Okay. So we want uh, 1M means uh, bold on, basically. Um, and then uh, to go back to plain text to do uh, bold off um, or, or to turn off any coloring, then it's, let's call this plain text. It's OX1B, open bracket, 0M. So I guess no, no text embellishment. And then we have, um, uh, green and magenta text, which are fairly standard colors. They're, they come from the uh, uh, a 16 color uh, palette that was popular way back in earlier days. Uh, so green text is, let's see, OX1B open bracket um, 32M. And then you would undo it with the, the same plain text uh, command. And then let's put in uh, magenta text. Okay. So these are all the sequences I wanted to add. Uh, let's use them in our interface. Let's do a little quick demo here. Um, so if I go to uh, mudinterface.cpp, let's see, we have uh, enter password. Oh, I already put this here from a previous uh, take of this. Uh, we're gonna put echo off here. So this is gonna send that uh, telnet will echo to tell the client to stop echoing. Um, and then uh, vice versa, echo on uh, once uh, we've received their password. Um, so also we could say, uh, welcome to the mud, let's bold that. So this is going to be a bold text. Uh, let's, fortunately, I'm gonna have to pull in the whole namespace because I don't feel like doing it uh, type by type, but let's pull in mud server. Uh, so bold text, welcome to the mud plain text, new line. And so you can see how, how we're kind of building this up. Um, and let's say, let's, let's highlight the user's name in uh, green text. Um, and then we'll do plain text, new line. Okay, um, so let's compile this. Let's see if, um, first of all, we did this right. Okay, we have to declare uh, ignore telnet command, but hopefully that's it. So this is a private void function, uh, ignore telnet command. Okay, all right, and then if we run it, and if we telnet to localhost 5000. Okay, so you can see, first of all, it bolded, welcome to the mud, I put in my name, it made it green, and then did this echo off work? Um, if I type in some password, yes, okay, it typed that in. Uh, it also didn't echo my, uh, my carriage return there, uh, so we need to make that happen. Um, but otherwise, this is, this is, we've got it. Um, so, I wanted to do this part on text to get all these these issues out of the way. I know it's not exactly programming, um, but this this really will give us a more featureful mud. It'll feel a little more alive with the, the bold texting um, and, and the colors and things. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're able to use that. Uh, in our next part, we'll, we'll, we'll dig in a little more to code. Um, but until then, my name is Ken, and this was Let's Code a Mud in C++11.